Hey everybody, welcome back to Vanland. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about one of the most common questions that we get from our customers, which is regarding wheels and tires. Now, most people will want to upgrade the wheels and tires on their Sprinter van, and for good reason, but you really need to know the specifics about wheels and tires to get the right setup. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about your wheel options, tire options, wheel offset, which is one of the most confusing things about all of this. And then we'll talk about how to maintain your new setup. All right, let's dive in. Let's get started by taking a look at your rim options. Now, there's no reason to go through an entire rim catalog and pick out the sweetest rims that you can find because most of them are not gonna fit on a Sprinter. And that is because Sprinter wheels have a very specific bolt pattern that's not very common in the industry. It's a six by 130 bolt pattern. So you have to get rims that are six by 130. And really there are only a few manufacturers that make this type of bolt pattern. Uh, there's Black Rhino, Method, Alvans makes a specific sprinter wheel that has the six by 130 bolt pattern. Also Agile Off-Road, and there are a few other brands that do make a rim for this van. So your best bet is just to go to our website and look at the wheel options because all the wheels that we have on our website will fit the sprinter van. In terms of wheel size, you basically have three options. You have 16 inch, 17 inch, and 18 inch rims. Now, 16 inch are what come on the van from the factory. These are the smallest rims that you would really ever want on a Sprinter van. Um, the 17 inch is the most common upgrade. So typically we'll, people will add that one inch of size to the rim to make it a little bit bigger and to stand a little bit taller. You can technically also fit an 18 inch rim on the van depending on the type of tire that you put on with it but in general just think 16 inch rims are the factory default and the 17 inch rim is going to be the most common upgrade finally when looking at rims you will see some of them that are beadlock versus non-beadlock um, the difference there is that a beadlock rim has a special ring around it that's meant to hold on the tire to the rim so that if you're airing down and you're in off-road conditions um, the tire is not going to come off of the rim and lose its pressurization. But in general, unless you're planning to do a lot of off-roading and be driving over hard surfaces like rocks all the time, then you don't want a beadlock rim. And as a matter of fact, they're not technically legal to drive on the road. So in general, you're looking for a 6x130 rim in the 17-inch range and a non-beadlock. The next thing we need to look at is the load capacity of the rim. So a fully built out Sprinter van like this is typically gonna weigh in the eight to 10,000 pound range. So we need to make sure the rims are certified to carry that weight. What we'd be looking at is at least 2,500 pounds of load capacity for each of the rims. But technically most of the weight in a Sprinter van ends up being in the back of the van. So uh, a load capacity of 3,000 to 4,000 pounds is more what we're looking for if you're gonna have a heavier van. So most of the rims that you'll find on the website are gonna have the proper load capacity for this, um, but you will see a range. And the, the highest load capacity are the OWL rims. Um, they are specifically designed for heavier sprinters, and those are gonna have a load capacity all the way up above 4,000 pounds. Something to note, if you do buy aftermarket rims, you're going to need to get new lugs for those rims. So the Sprinter OEM wheels come with a dome style lug, and that is not very common. It's not gonna fit your aftermarket rims. What you're gonna need is a cone style lug. You have six of them per wheel, Wheel, you're gonna need 24 new lug bolts in order to put aftermarket wheels on your van. Now let's take a look at your tire options. And the first thing I want to go over are the numbers on a tire that you need to know in order to pick out the right variety. Typically you'll see something on a tire like this that says 265 by 70 by R17 for example. That's a very common style tire that you would put on a Sprinter van. And so the 265 or the first number, you might see this as 245, 55, 65, or 75. That's the actual width of the tire. So if you take the tire off and measure it from side to side, 
that is the width in millimeters. The second number, which will be 65, 70, or 75, typically is called the aspect ratio. And this is the ratio between the width of the tire and then the size of the sidewall. So it's not given to you as a specific number, it's always a ratio, um, but that's what it refers to. So the larger the number, the more sidewall that you're gonna see. And if the number were going down, like to 50 or so, you'd actually have a narrow sidewall, in which case you would have a larger rim to fill up that extra space. And the final number, which is the R17 or R16, that is just the diameter of the rim itself. So think of R as rim size. So a common size that we would put on a van, and this works for pretty much all Sprinter vans, is a 265-70 R17. Tires also come in a number of different tread varieties based on the type of travel that you plan to do. If you buy a van off of the lot, they're just gonna come with your basic highway tires. Those are going to be good on the road for tracking straight in normal conditions. They won't have a lot of road noise and generally you get a pretty decent lifespan out of those. But most people who have a van like this are gonna to wanna to take it off road into some gravel, some mud, some snow. And that's where you'd be looking for an all-terrain tire. All-terrain tires are gonna be a, a lot more knobbly. They're gonna have more tread on them. And the treads are gonna be spaced out such that if you do get mud and snow in them, it can eject that out of the treads rather than getting packed in, um, in which point the tire will basically just become a slick. You can go all the way to an aggressive mud and snow tire, but just keep in mind, as you go with more aggressive tires, they're gonna make more road noise. They are actually a little bit more prone to cupping and some of the other issues that you can have with tires. And certainly they're going to be softer, which also makes them a little bit less durable over time. Very commonly, types of tires that most people are going with on Sprinter vans, certainly the most popular is the BF Goodrich KO2. We also do a lot of Wild Peaks from Falcon. That's another tire that's very popular. Toyo, Yokohama, pretty much every tire manufacturer makes an AT tire. And so that's what you'll wanna look for when you're doing a lot of on-road, but some off-road travel would just be a standard AT or all-terrain tire. Another very important thing to look for when you're selecting a tire is the load rating. So these are LT tires that technically stands for light truck and the load rating is load E and E means it's a 10 ply tire and it's gonna be able to handle the weight that you're putting on it just like the rim. So both the rims and the tires need to be selected to carry the appropriate amount of weights. And the last thing that you need to be aware of is the tire pressure rating. You can find the recommended tire pressures on the door jam of the Sprinter, but that really pertains to the tires that the van came with from the factory. So if you're buying aftermarket tires, you really need to be aware of the upper and lower limits of pressure rating for this because the beefier tires can actually handle more pressure and also lower pressures as well because they're designed to keep that beadlock intact even when you're airing down for off-road conditions. In addition to selecting the right rims and the right tires, you also have to be aware that if you're upsizing your tire, you're gonna need to do a couple of body modifications. On the front end of the van where the wheels turn and articulate, um, if you get a larger tire in there, it's gonna actually rub on the inner fender well. So there's a kit for the front end called the Mondo Mudguard. And what that does is it opens up the rear side where the mud flap is on the front end. And that just gives room for the wheel to turn back and forth without rubbing. On the rear, the wheels don't articulate in the rear, obviously, but a larger tire does come pretty close to that rear mud flap. So there's a modification for the rear as well if you wanna open that up. And something to be aware of is that if you're having larger wheels and tires under certain conditions, um, let's say for instance, you're going downhill and your suspension is compressed, you still may get some rubbing. So it's worth knowing about that ahead of time so you don't think there's an issue and also understanding where the wheel is gonna rub just so you feel confident even if you do get a rubbing noise that it's not causing a problem. Okay, now let's talk about wheel offset which is probably the most confusing thing about selecting wheels and tires. So what is wheel offset? Wheel offset refers to the mounting surface or the mounting pad of the wheel, which is where the wheel connects to the axle with respect to the center of the tire. 
So a zero offset means that the mounting surface is directly in line with the center of the tire. Just something to note, all sprinters are gonna have a positive offset, so it's always gonna be a number greater than zero. And this is where it can get a little bit confusing. With a positive offset, the wheel's actually gonna move into the van, and with a negative offset, it moves out towards the outside of the van. So there's really not a good reason to move the wheel inside the van, but there are a number of reasons why you would want to move the wheel out or provide a negative offset. Specifically, if you're putting on suspension kits or some of the big brake upgrades, they're gonna need room behind the wheel for that equipment to be mounted without rubbing on the wheel or tire. Commonly, you'll see, for instance, Owl Vans makes a wheel that's specifically designed for a sprinter, and it has a 38 millimeter offset. You'll see numbers from 30 to 40, all the way up into the mid 50s. And so as the wheel offset goes up, the tire moves in, and as the number goes negative, the tire goes out. There is one issue you need to be aware of. With the sliding door on the Sprinter, you can only move the tire out so far before it's gonna interfere with the sliding door. So you have a, a narrow range of wheel offsets that you can actually use on a Sprinter and still be okay in terms of having enough space behind the wheel to fit your equipment, but not having it out so far that the sliding door is gonna hit the tire. If you already have your rims and tires and you need more room behind them in order to fit some equipment, you can actually get a wheel spacer. And this is just a machined piece of metal that connects to the hub of the wheel and it will move it out to give you more space. So a couple reasons that you would want to use this wheel spacer, simply if you want a wider stance on the vehicle which can lower the center of gravity, some people will add a wheel spacer just for that. If you're doing a front strut replacement and you're putting on larger struts, you're almost certainly gonna need more room in order to fit those. And also a big brake kit. Heavy duty brakes are often quite large and they need space as well. So if you don't have the right offset on your rim, then you can add a spacer to give yourself more room. Now the rims on a Sprinter are what is called hub centric. So the the weight of the vehicle is not actually riding on the lugs, which would be called a lug-centric wheel. These are hub-centric. So you just wanna make sure that if you do get wheel spacers, that you are getting a hub-centric wheel spacer. You can check them out on our website. We only carry the type that would be appropriate to use on a Sprinter. Now there's one more caveat. If you do a wheel spacer, and as I said before, if you're gonna do any aftermarket wheel upgrade, you're going to need new lugs. Well, if you put a wheel spacer on, you're actually gonna need wheel studs and nuts because there's now more space that that, that lug would have to take up. And technically you're supposed to have seven revolutions of thread in order to safely take these vans on the road. So just be aware, if you're gonna go with a wheel spacer, you're also gonna need to once again, get a new type of mounting lug. A couple things to watch out for now that we've talked about all this. Um, upgrading the wheels and tires, there's definitely some consequences to this. Obviously, if you put a larger wheel and tire on the van, it's actually gonna lift it off of the ground, which can be great for clearance. But now you have a, a little bit higher center of gravity and it's gonna be potentially less stable. Also, if you have a negative offset and you're moving the tire out, it's going to be likely that you're going to be throwing mud and potentially even small rocks onto the side of the vehicle. So I'm sure you've seen this before on people who have wide stance vehicles with the tires outside of the body often have a lot of spray on the side of the vehicle. Again, you need to look out for the sliding door to make sure that's going to clear. Um, one more thing, if you're trying to get the largest wheels and tires on your van and going up to 35 inch, you're actually gonna need an ECU upgrade because now the sensors that are reading how fast the wheels are turning are gonna be off from the GPS, which is measuring the distance that you're traveling. So this can be an issue and you'll actually get a, a code that comes up on the dashboard 
um, that is going to turn off some of those automatic braking and distance control systems um, because it's reading an error. So there are consequences to doing it. And finally, if you're trying to, again, get the biggest wheels and tires on the van, then most likely you're going to have to lift the van a couple inches to make room for it. These are a few things to keep in mind as you're going through this process. It's not just as simple as buying some new rims and tires, taking it to the tire shop and saying, put these on. Most likely the tire shop that's not tuned into what you need for a sprinter is going to tell you that those new wheel and tires don't fit because they'll go through their computer and they'll say, nope, it doesn't fit. There's going to be rubbing, etc." cetera. Um, so obviously those of us who are into sprinters, we have a lot of workarounds for that that will make them work. But just be aware that um, not every tire shop is going to know what to do with the Sprinter. Okay, almost forgot one more thing that you need to think about. If you're going to be upgrading your wheels and tires, you really need to be buying a set of five, not just four new wheels and tires. And the reason that is, is because the spare tire will be a smaller tire that came with the van. And you really should be riding on a full size wheel and tire, especially if you are going to be changing the tire when you're in the back country and you're not immediately going to be able to take it to a tire shop to get it fixed. You don't want to be riding on 17 inch rims on three of them and a 16 inch rim on another. The second reason is the spare tire is typically mounted underneath the back of the van in a cage and you lower it when you need to have access to it. Um, that can often be very difficult if you're in snowy conditions, muddy conditions, or rocky conditions where the van is not totally stable. And that's why you'll see a lot of people have their spare tire mounted to the back door of the van so that if you need access to it, it's gonna be way easier to pull that off, dismount it from the carrier and put it on. Then it would be to lower a tire, get access to that in, like I said, in some challenging conditions. The other thing is if the wheel and tire is big enough, it's not even gonna fit in that cage without a modification. So just something to keep in mind, you're gonna need five new wheels and tires, not just four. Something pretty much all new vehicles come with and the sprinters definitely have them, are TPMS sensors. So those are pressure sensors that are in the valve stem of the tire and they're reading the pressure and sending it to the computer and it will actually display on the screen if you want to get your tire pressures right off of the display of the sprinter. You can scroll through and find what your tire pressure is. But the vehicle will not operate properly without the TPMS sensors installed. So there are really two ways to go about this. Your factory tires will have TPMS sensors in them, and when you're doing an upgrade, the installer can pull that sensor and put it in the new tire. But if for some reason they weren't working or you forgot to pull them out, you can buy um, additional TPMS sensors. We really only recommend buying the Mercedes OEM sensors. Um, they just are way easier to pair up and a lot less hassle than an aftermarket TPMS sensor. Um, but be aware they are about $100 per wheel and you should be buying one of them for your spare as well. So that can add a few hundred bucks to the whole job if you aren't able to move your sensors over. While we're on the topic of tire pressure, the standard pressure that you'll run on a Sprinter is 70 PSI in the rear and 55 in the front. And now a lot of people will want to air down when they're taking their Sprinter van off road. We recommend going down to only about 30 PSI or maybe 25 PSI at the lowest. You'll hear these serious off-road guys saying that you should go much lower than that. But generally with a van that's this heavy, unless you're really trying to scale some big boulders that the van wasn't really designed to do anyways, 30 to 25 PSI is pretty much the lowest pressure that you want to run it at. And that's also why you'll see a lot of people adding air compressors under the hood of the van, because when you come off of the trail and you're hitting the highway, you wanna have a way to quickly air up the tires. And um, you certainly don't wanna to have to wait until you can drive to an air station, a gas station, or a tire station in order to air up. So some of the new rims, especially uh, the ones from Owl Vans are dual stem, so it makes airing down and airing up a lot easier. But that's just also something to think about when you're looking at your wheels and tires and planning out your next adventure is airing up and airing down. In terms of the lifespan of the tire, 
a good tire should last you upwards of 25 to 30,000 miles or even more depending on how you're driving it. Some of the more off-road biased tires are gonna be as little as 10 to 15,000 miles. Um, that's because the compounds are softer, which makes them stickier. So better off-road performance, but they're not gonna hold up as long. Also in terms of rotating your tires, every 5,000 miles or maybe up to 7,500 miles, again, depending on how you're driving is when you wanna rotate your tires. And one of the questions we get from people is, should I rotate my spare in? And I would say definitely do not rotate your spare. Um, the reason is um, because if you go 5,000 miles, you're gonna have four tires that have gone 5,000 and one that's gone zero miles. So if you put that in, it's automatically going to kind of throw the balance off. Secondly, when you go to replace your tires, now you only have to replace four of them and your spare is still in good shape. However, I would say that some people do rotate the spare on the back door if it's mounted there, and that's simply because the sun is always gonna be hitting the top of the tire, and that will degrade it a little bit, so you don't wanna put it in rotation with the rest of your tires, but you may actually just wanna rotate it on the carrier in order to give it the longest potential lifespan. So now finally, we come to the question that everyone asked, which is, what is the biggest wheel and tire I can fit on the van? I would say you shouldn't be looking for the largest wheel and tire you can fit. Our recommendation is to go with a 17 inch rim and then the tire should be about a 265-70 R17. If you go wider than that, you're definitely gonna get rubbing in certain situations. Um, you don't want to have to reprogram your computer in order for it to read the tire size correctly. I don't think you really want to lift a four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive van unless you really need to, certainly not to just get larger tires on it. So our recommendation is not to look for the largest you can get, but the most appropriate for the vehicle. So again, 17-inch rim and then a 265-70 R17 is our recommendation. All right guys, so that was wheels and tires all in one video. Hopefully this helps you guys select the right equipment for your van. If you have any questions or something wasn't clear, please leave a comment below. Um, I'll answer all of those if they weren't answered in the video. And of course you can check out our website. We have wheel and tire combos that you guys can purchase, either have installed or potentially install yourself. We do have some where the tires come mounted to the wheels ready to go. That's a wrap for this video. Thanks as always for watching and we will see you guys again next time.